That was a tough question, Jeffrey, wasn't it, eh? It's a toughie. Todd out here, guys. It was simple. Well, I <laughs> just asked what the public, he made the statement, not me. Yeah, but, you've asked it to, but you've asked it to Jimmy well, Anderson, the not Paul Fabro. He's the vice captain. He's the vice captain. Well, they must have discussed it. He actually said in his interview, though, about we start Planning. preparing. Mm. So he said it, not me. Mm. I picked him up on it. You didn't, but I picked him up on it. <laughs> and I picked Fabro up because they talk about planning and preparing, but they haven't done it. What they've done for this series obviously hasn't worked. That's if they've done any. Well, I would assume they've done some, maybe not enough. That's a, a matter mm. for debate, but uh, accepted uh, that you picked him up on it. Um, listen, the, the point about the moments going Australia's way, do you accept that? No. Nah. No, I mean, it, they, they, can, they can kind of uh, grab a little bit of hope if they, they feel that they, they, they could have won a few more. Of course they could, but you know, the, the, the facts are that the Australian team in these conditions are just far better. I've, I've said it for a few days now. Australia are, are a lot closer to winning in England conditions than England are winning in Australia. Yes. Conditions. We're miles yes. away from winning over here with what we've got, what we produce. But Australia, if England feel that they'll just go back in 2019, get that juke ball in the hand and beat this Australian side, yeah. you look at the venues, Old Trafford, the Oval and Lords, there's three that the pitch will be flat. Yeah. Australia will play well on flat wickets headingly. Australia have a good record at headingly. England don't, you know, over the last few years. So if England feel that they'll just get it all rosy back home with that juke ball in hand and beat this Australian side, I think this Australian side are one batsman away from being very, very strong. If they can find an opening batsman to go in there with Warner, we've seen Kawaja find form, we've seen the Marge brothers. If they stay fit and find that opening batsman, I really do think this Australian side are going to be a very, very high quality test team. Like you, I'm puzzled that they believed when they came out here that they really could have an upset. That was the word he used. Mm. And I was telling people at home, four to one Australia, if they're quick, stay fit, because I've seen them bowl. They're better than ours. And I was worried about Cummings, because he's been six years coming to the fore since he first played. I was worried about Stark, he'd had an ankle injury. If they broke down, then it's a different game, because I'm like Michael. I don't think they're Jason Birds and people behind Jackson the scenes Bird, are as yeah. good as these. Yeah. But the fact is, you know, they didn't break down, and I'm puzzled that they actually believe, the England team, they, that actually they were going to create an upset, because I didn't see it. Well, there's the, 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 the flesh on the bones mm. of, the, of the bowling debate, I suppose. It's not really much of a debate, is it? Pat Cummins, in the end, uh, the series lead in terms of wickets with 23, just ahead of but Mitchell's Matt, I think, start. I think that the biggest sure sign for England is that Jimmy Anderson is one of our greatest. Yeah. He is Absolutely. a great, he's great a, he's bowler. He's a legend. And he's game. got 17 wickets on these wickets. So in four years' time, somehow England have got to find some bowlers because he's not going to be there. No, Stuart Broad's not going to be there. They've now got a four-year cycle of... I don't know how they do it, but they've got to find a bit of pace. They've got right. to find a world-class spinner from somewhere. Again, they're not all just falling off trees. Mason Crane looked very promising here, but again, he's 20 years of age, so hopefully in four years' time, he's had four years of test match playing uh, around the world, and he'll be a lot better for it. But you look at Jimmy Anderson, of uh, an average of 27.82, and just look at the other four. I mean, Joe Root, not bad, but the skipper. Uh, also, but, yeah. I mentioned this, though. You've got to look at the batting as well, not just the bowling. Look at our batting. We will do. Yeah, well, I hope our producers get the figures. You want to look at them? He will. He will. Um, but listen, look at the average for Moeen. 115. Mm. I, know. I know we're kind of flogging him, but, but that's not anybody's fault. It's just a fact. It's not good enough for a frontline spinner, is it? Um, he, well, obviously, he, he hasn't really done well with the bat either. But um, look, he, he'll hopefully go away and, and somehow get some confidence. I think the issue in terms of the bowling, though, is there's so much county cricket played. And what fast bowlers sometimes tend to do is get in the knack of just bowling seam up. Just because on those wickets it just does enough. You've only got to bowl around 80 odd mile an hour trying to get the nick right. We're in Australia, you've got to work harder for a wicket. And the guys run in day in, day out and try and bowl as quick as they possibly can. I reckon England have got to adopt that approach. You know what I do, Brett? I've said it on the radio just an hour or so ago. I'll get shot down by the members of all the counties. I'd play two county matches in March overseas. Why not? All these counties go overseas for preparation for the season. They're preparing Dubai, they're preparing the West Indies, South Africa. Take two county matches overseas, play with the Kookaburra ball, play on flat wickets. We have 14 first-class matches at home. It's more than any other country in the world. Yet the members will hate me for saying it, because I'm taking two four-day games away from their county pass that they love going, sitting in the stands and watching. 
for the development of England cricket That's going forward. Yep. I'll be playing two county matches on these wickets. It'll develop spin. You look at the younger Patel, the leg, uh, left arm spinner for yep. Middlesex this year. Good left arm spinner. He's going to play around eight of the 14 matches in April, May, in September. How can that develop a left arm spinner in those conditions? Go and play a couple overseas. Well, it's an interesting idea. I don't know what you think, Jeffrey. English cricket that does have to evolve, doesn't it? Otherwise, we're going to be saying the same old thing in four years, eight years, 12 years. It doesn't matter what we say. It doesn't matter what good ideas it comes up with. It won't change. Oh. They'll go home. Should we give and, up then? Uh, don't, no, give up, we can say it, but they're not going to change. They never have. They're going to go home. They'll do well in the summer, as he says, with a juke ball. Jimmy's still a fantastic bowler. Brody is. He has magic spells. And yeah, they'll do well and they'll think, forget Australia. Everything's lovely. Yeah. Carry on. And that's what they've done. We did terrible in India last winter. Then we just carried on in the summer, did well, and then thought we'd come out here with the same team. We'd come out with Moyne, who's a batsman who rolls his arm over and do well here. Well, they think he can't bowl, and they've mm. proved it. Mm. You wanted to talk about the batting. Let's have a look. Who gets a tick from you, Geoffrey, on the batting front from an English point of view? I think Joe's played quite well. He's he just disappointed, irritated himself. He hasn't gone on to make big scores that have controlled the game. But actually, he's made about 550s, Andy. I yeah. can't read the screen without it's my glasses, as he said. He's about 550s, <laughs> Andy, Joe, if you looked at well, it. Well, yeah, he's made 378 in total. Obviously, could have, hopefully, would have made more here but without the illness. The look at cookies. Yeah. Take out the 244 for me. Can you do that and yeah, see well, how many runs he made in eight, in eight well, innings? Well, it's about 130, isn't it, roughly? Well, 130 in eight innings, and he's your second best player to Joe. Whoa, you have no chance. Forget that. And he's up front. Yeah. He's helping a, a newish guy open. Yeah. I mean, th there isn't enough good batting in that. There isn't enough solid batting. The Australians grind you down. They bat all day. Well, you just look at the top three. You've got Stoneman of an average of 25, Vince of 26. Then you go Johnny Bairstow. Just an average of 34. No, pretty good, but you know you'd expect over 40 on the wickets, and that's the disappointment for me. Is that England when they come here, you generally get fast and bouncy in Brisbane. Well, mm. it was slow. You know, you generally get fast and bouncy in Perth. There was just a bit of bounce. Mm. You generally get a bit more zip here. This has yeah. been flat. So for the England batsmen to kind of be averaging those figures on the wickets that they've played, I know the Australian attack's very, very good, but it's been the conditions that very you know I'd batting. have been delighted to have got, got these wickets mm. if I'd have been a batsman because. You couldn't really have said that they've been that many Jaffers. There's not been many balls. I know the, the tail end got a couple of brutes today. But We're not worried about tail end. You, you don't know. You don't, don't, last, I haven't seen hours, many. Uh, how, many, how many slip catches has there been in the series? How many balls have kind of been on off stomach, flown head high to the slip cord? There hasn't been many of those like last time. Last time here, four years ago, you know, the whole tour was derailed by Mitchell Johnson, Ryan Harris. They were yeah, bowling yeah. England out. I look at this uh, tour and think that to the England batsmen, you've got yourself out. For the majority of the time, you've made mistakes. And that's been Man. through poor thinking and lack of concentration you have to do better than that there'll be people at home or big England supported saying oh Michael and I are being negative about England well how can you put a positive spin on poor batting at times it can't I, you know we'd be lying our credibility would be short look at the figures you got your England tie on haven't you yeah because I'm proud of it yes. number 422 what's your number 600 there you are we, we did the best we could and at times we did pretty good and but that's not we good enough. As well. Not too often. <laughs> not, as, not as often as them. I'll put it that way. Don't and, keep and tossing that's, balls up for you. Know that's what, the you... difference. They don't make enough runs. You can't have batsmen averaging 25, yeah. 27. That isn't going to win Testament. Sorry, the batsmen have to put you in a position to win. I don't care what you say. The Australian batsmen have made big spores and they've given the bowlers very good bowlers. Well, plenty of nine runs. Australian centuries in this series, mm. three for England. England have actually made more 50s than the Aussies, yeah. but that's the conversion problem, isn't yeah. it? That's not, a, that's not a good thing. And I think it was you, I was on with you the other day, and you were saying that there's, there's an issue if you get to 30 or 40, and you've, d you've done the hard work. You can prove that you can get through that new ball, or you can prove that you can bat for time, and then you suddenly just nick one off. So there's something not right with what's going on upstairs. And, and that's the difference, I think, the application that the Australian players have made. They've, they've got the 30 and 40 and made a big one. They've gone on to make the 100. I, I also think that you, you've got to find some confidence out of this batting and bowling lineup from England. You, you, you know, you can't just go back home and think, OK, well, we've had a, a shocking series. On paper, that's what's happened, right? Yeah. But somehow, and what we do in Australia, is we try to find something positive to take out of it and that's the Australian culture I think that's got to be adapted over in England as well you've got to understand you've been beaten fairly and squarely but also say okay well in parts I think we played okay well I think David Milan is the the success story of the England uh, batting unit because you know he's been willing to do the hard yards I watched him practice you know he 
got, uh, struggled against Nathan Lyon. He went into the uh, the nets. He started to use his feet. He brought that to the middle. He struggled against uh, Pat Cummins around the wicket. He was out twice. What did he do? He went into the nets. He got bowlers to bowl a bit closer because he wanted it quicker. With that angle of around the wicket, you know what? He went out in the middle and he produced performances. I watched Mark Stoneman practice. He's been peppered since Perth. I've not seen him once in the nets going and face a load of bounces. He faced underarms playing our follies. You're not going to get many of those at test match level. Oh. So I think it's the mindset of the player. It's the mindset of do you desperately want to be out there? And you know what? If you're making mistakes and you're being found out a little bit, you've got to go into the nets. You've got to get the coaches. They've got all the tools that you require and you've got to practice all the different angles and you've got to test yourself mentally in the nets. You've got to make practice hard. You know, I've always been a big believer that if you want to try and succeed under the stage of an Ashes, 50,000, millions watching around the world, your practice has got to be so hard that when you get out in the middle, it seems a little bit easier. Because if you're going to practice soft and easy, I'm telling you what, when you get out there, it's mm. going to be a big surprise. What so I would, quest I would question a few of the England batsmen mm. how they practice. Smith said, didn't he? He practices a lot in yeah. the nets. He practices hard, it's lots of balls. He works at it to be ready for the middle. It's, it's a good point. But also, what do the coaches do? Do they take them out? Do they work with There's so many of them behind the scenes. Yeah. I, look, I can ask you many questions, but you've got a director of cricket, you've got a head coach, you've got a batting coach, you've got a deputy coach, haven't you? There's so many there. I mean, somebody else who runs them all, who pays the wages, they should be asking the question and checking on what they're all doing. The debate will continue here in the uh, Sydney sunshine. Uh, you've got a plane to catch on behalf of all the county chairmen and myself. Thank you very much, Jeffrey, for <laughs> giving up my toes. I hope so. I've had enough of this. <laughs> <laughs> Brett, too, thank you very much Pleasure. for your time. Well, you, oh, he's thrown his mic down. See you, Good Jeffrey. Rebel to the end. Rebel to the end. He's walked off. We're back shortly.